Over the past few thousand years, millions of human beings have been directly and significantly impacted by volcanic eruptions. Yet one eruption nearly 2,000 years ago stands apart as the most influential eruption of all time. The volcano that produced that eruption is called Vesuvio by Italians, and in English, Mount Vesuvius. And its eruption in 79 AD buried several Roman cities, including Pompeii and Herculaneum. The rediscovery of these cities is possibly the greatest archaeological find anywhere, and their excavation shed light on one of the greatest civilizations of all time, rekindled interest in the classical era, and helped advance the science of volcanology. Mount Vesuvius is in a tectonically complex and volcanically active region in Italy, southeast of Rome. Subduction of the African plate beneath the Eurasian plate is probably an important cause of the volcanism, but rifting may also play a role. Mount Vesuvius is just a small part of an active volcanic area located on the Campanian Plain. Vesuvius itself was built on the collapsed remnants of the much larger and older Soma volcano. In a major eruption about 17,000 years ago, that volcano collapsed to form a four kilometer wide caldera, within which Vesuvius later formed. Since the eruption of 79 AD, Vesuvius has erupted about three dozen times, most recently in 1944. It's been quiet since that time, taking its longest break between eruptions in nearly 500 years. In 79 AD, there were several cities near Mount Vesuvius, but the largest and best known was Pompeii. Pompeii was a thriving Roman city when the nearby mountain roared to life on August 24, 79 AD, which was, ironically, the date of the festival celebrating Vulcan, the Roman god of fire. People had no idea the mountain was a volcano, and in fact, Romans didn't even have a word for volcano. A well-known naturalist, Pliny the Elder, died during the eruption. Many have said he was killed by the eruption, but others think that because Pliny was a rather chubby fellow, he may have in fact died of a heart attack or stroke. But his nephew, Pliny the Younger, wrote an account of the eruption that survives to this day and is considered the first document of modern volcanology. Here's what happened. Beginning about 1 p.m. on August 24th, a very powerful eruption formed a column of hot volcanic debris that shot out of the volcano at hundreds of meters per second. At high altitude, the column fanned out into a mushroom-like cloud, which is thought to have reached a height of around 32 kilometers, about twice as high as even a large thunderstorm. Within 30 minutes, volcanic debris was raining down on Pompeii, resulting in many deaths, and within about four hours, collapsing roofs. This violent eruption produced about four cubic kilometers of volcanic debris, and this style of eruption, owing to the descriptions by Pliny the Younger, is now called a Plinian eruption. That was only the beginning. After midnight, the eruptive column began to collapse, which led to the formation of pyroclastic flows. Pyroclastic flows are hot mixtures of gas and volcanic debris capable of flowing over land or water at over 300 kilometers per hour. Starting about 7.30 the next morning, pyroclastic flows overran Pompeii, each one taking less than 10 seconds to completely envelop the city and everyone still remaining inside the city was killed. The bodies were encased in ash and decayed away over time, leaving behind casts. Archaeologists discovered the casts and have preserved hundreds by filling them in with plaster, giving us a haunting glimpse into the final moments of the citizens of Pompeii. Thousands died during the eruption. The area was turned into a desert-like landscape and remain unoccupied for a thousand years. One of the interesting things about Pompeii is when you look at the columns, you see that they're actually commonly built out of pyroclastic materials. These are tufts and possibly even welded tufts in places. You see flattened uh, scoria and, and pumice fragments. It's pretty natural that they use these local materials, but it's also true that if they had realized what they were, they might not have been so surprised in AD 79 when Vesuvius erupted, burying the city. 
Today, nearly 2,000 years later, thanks to the development of the field of volcanology and our modern geophysical tools, we are vastly more likely to not be surprised by the next eruption of Mount Vesuvius. Scientists do believe that more large eruptions will occur eventually. But is there another major eruption looming in the near future? And when it does eventually occur, will we have enough time to evacuate the million or more people who will need to be moved out of harm's way? Or will we end up looking rather foolish for ignoring the lesson of Pompeii, Italy?